Good day, student. I'm Makoje Tawab Blazid, and today we'll be looking at uh, post 302, that's history of political thought 2. And under this study session, we'll be looking at uh, the political thought of uh, Julius Yeriri. Julius Yeriri, as we know, was uh, the, the first uh, in the pre, uh, post independent uh, president of, of Tanzania. Uh, African political narrative will be considered distorted without discussion on the immense contribution of Julius Kambarange Nyerere. This study session focuses on the life and contribution of Nyerere to the development of African political thought. Now, let's look at the life of Julius Nyerere. Julius Kambarange Nyerere lived between 13 April 1922 and 14 October 1999. He was a Tanzania politician who served as the first president of Tanzania, previously known as Tanganyika from the country's founding in 1961 until his retirement in 1985. African political thinker, he was born in Taganyika to the family of Nyerere Burrito. Nyerere was known as Mwalimu, is a Swahili word for teacher. He was also referred to as Baba Wataifa, father of the nation. Nyerere attended higher education at Makariri University in Kampala, and the University of Endibor. After he returned to Tanganyika, he worked as a teacher. And in 1961, Yuri was elected as Tanganyika first prime minister. And following independence, the country in 1962, he became the country's first president. In 1964, Tanganyika became politically united with Zanzibar and was renamed Tanzania. In 1965, as a one party election returned Yuri to power, two years later, he issued the Arusha Declaration. In fact, the Richard Declarations is the foundation of the Nigerian political thought, especially when we look at uh, uh, Ujamaa, so, uh, which outlined a socialist vision of Ujamaa that came to dominate his policies. His publications include Freedom and Socialism, a selection of rights in a species uh, between 1965 and 1967, include the Arusha Declarations, Education for Self-Reliance, very parts of socialism, freedom and development, Uru Namendelio, that was the one he published in 1974, Ujama, an essay on socialism, which he published in 1977, Crusade for Libra Lib Liberation, which he published in 1979, and Julia Kesari, among so many others that he published. Uh, Ujama Vigigini, this is the injurious African version of socialism. And rural development. Uh, he has to look at different ideas of socialism from different parts of the world, from Russia, which was then known as United Soviet Socialist Republic, USSR, and China. He now formed his own, and Cuba, he now formed his own version of, of African socialism. Ujama socialism, as it's mostly called, is the political idea of injury. Ujama is a Swahili word meaning familyhood. In Africa, familyhood includes the extended family. Ujama epitomizes familyhood in the Yeri concept of village of African socialism. Family for him included, included the entire humanity. The conception is derived from the strong sense of brotherhood, that is fraternity, in traditional African life. Ujama socialism is informed by traditional African tenets, such as one, the fact that African society, everybody was a worker and there is no exploitation of surplus value as such. Two, that every member of the society enjoyed the security and hospitality provided by it. And since each person contributed to the economic production of the society, of course, and for that reason, it should enjoy from whatever the society has to provide, be it security or, or hospitality. Hospitality. Number three, the communal ownership of land was maintained, and Idra has only the right to use land. In Yuri, therefore, sees socialism as an attitude of the mind. It is that attitude that concern that has concern for each other's welfare, which is used for the service of the mankind and not for exploitation. Thus, what distinguishes a socialist society from a capitalist society is not the method of production but the way in which wealth is distributed among the members of that society. Socialism is essentially distributive, unlike capitalism, where it is only for, it is individualistic, where people work, and if you're rich, 
you continue to acquire more riches and you continue to acquire more wealth at the detriment of the few who are actually working for you. Uh, Ujama socialism is therefore opposed to capitalism and capitalist and all capitalist attitudes. In you already see Ujama as a way of life which is opposed to European socialism. European socialism is a product of class war, but Ujama socialism do not need any class conflict to originate. It is opposed to all forms of discrimination, racial or tribal. It insists on equality for all people. It builds on classless society, devoid of all forms of exploitation. In Europe, propound gradualism and not radicalism as the best strategy for the development and promotion of Ujama. What it means by gradualism is that gradually, that shouldn't be radical. Radical is sudden change, change, sudden and aggressive change. But its own gradualism is that that change must be gradual, and people must be carrying along in that process, and very, live verily, they will attain all their goals. Ujama is aim at pragmatic answer to all need of the people based on African social value. And Europe perceives socialism to be in the realm of ideology that can generate and respect society as they develop their own system of socialism. Europe see religion as a private to the individual and not infringe upon. And as such, it maintains that individuals should not be suppressed in the collectivity. A Europe posited that the tenet of Yama include one, man and social equality. He emphasized that nothing is more central to social this society than the acceptance of the fact that man is a justification for existence. Man fully recognized in his equality with, with his fellow man. Ujama is the belief in the fundamental equality and brotherhood of all men. He really believe that equality should be reflected in political organization since it's the will of the people and give meaning to democracy. Number two, the meaning, the theory of like, exploitation demands that Ujama socialism must eliminate all oppressive factors that hinder the reign of equality, such as profit motive and self-interest behavior. According to Yuri, when one man controls the means which other men earn or obtains food, clothing, and shelter, which I said earlier, then there is no equality. It means that the individual or group have power over the lives of others. And in order to combat external exploitation in Tanzania, and Yuri nationalized all means of production, problems of Ujama, shortage of educated manpower, because, because it's a country that just came out of... Uh, of colonialism and because of their low educational system a lot of people are still still have low educations and the Ujama tenant needed a lot of educated people for them to implement it so they have such of educated manpower Two, lack of initial financial assistance in the area of food housing facility and technical advice etc because of the at the time there is a cold war that was going on in time and an ideological cold war that was between the United States on one part and its allies on one part, and USSR, United Soviet Socialist Republic, who is now known as Russia, on the other one. The US is supporting capitalism, while Russia is supporting socialism. And for that reason, US not gives support to any country that is towing socialist line and, 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 uh, and the jettisoning capitalism. And for this reason, they do not get financial assistance in the area of food as in facilities and technical advice. Three, misplaced priorities by government ministry. For instance, the manpower and financial resources of the Ministry of Agriculture were food and cooperative were diverted to other hand rather than Ujama villages. Four, the tenacity which which the inverted colonial receives the chain, the richer and the better of in the rural areas have traditionally expected the poorer ones. The people in the society who were rich, who have been rich before the the system, the, the Ujama began we're fighting it, we're sabotaging this, the, the efforts of the Ujama implementation on the brand. Similarly, there's a quality traditional conflict between the districts and regional authority between and between the central authority. Number five, similar conflicts exist between district and cultural officers and local political leader with regards to the running of the villages between technical and political advice on one side and the village on the other. Number seven, the part of the reason for this difficulty is lack of understanding of the policy of Ujama will give rise to rule confusion. Another reason is the absence of effective leadership. The absence of effective leadership, good and acceptable leadership in the program demand that all leaders should live in the village. Only very few actually do. The, the dualism, also the dualism in the system of cooperative side by side with wage earner. 
the bureaucratic red tape in the circulation of economic planning and general institutions, inherent corruption of public official operating the state monopoly capitalism, importation and perverse scarcity arising from colonialism and neocolonialism are some of the reasons, and also there is, there is no free education for all, and all persons will not be able to benefit from it up to university level. These are some of the, the problems that Ujama faced. Thank you very much.